From the Ear to There Travel Studio, this is the Ear to There Disney Podcast. The Ear to There Podcast, it's time to start the show. Be sure to hold on tight, here we go. Exploring all the different Disney destinations. Ear to There, it's time to start the fun. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ear to There Disney Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Gramlick. I am also the owner and the founder of Ear to There Travel, which is, of course, a Disney-specialized travel agency. It's my job, along with the other vacationeers on the Ear to There Travel team, to take away all that stress, all the anxiety, and all that time that it takes to plan a Disney trip so you can focus on the really, really fun things like having a phenomenal time with your family and friends and enjoying the magic. And I, along with the other vacationeers on the team, we will take away that stress, take away that anxiety, and give you back all that time at absolutely no cost to you. So just like the buses and monorails in Walt Disney World, our services don't cost a thing. You can listen to this podcast, read the blog, or get a free no-obligation quote from me or any of the other vacationeers on the team over at Ear to Their Travel. Dot com. All right, this is episode number 154 for the week of January 21st, 2019. Now, grab a drink, grab a snack, and as a famous mouse once said, on with the show. The question I get, I think most often from clients, from listeners of the podcast, followers on social media, the one question I get more often than any others is we're taking a trip to Walt Disney World or we want to take a trip. Where should we stay? And the honest and simple answer to that question is I have no idea. (laughs) And it's, I say that jokingly, but also kind of truthfully. Because there is a lot, there are a lot of small decisions that have to be made to make that one big decision. And of course, that one big decision is where should we stay in Walt Disney World on our trip? So because I get that question all the time, I wanted to create an episode where I can say, hey, go back and listen to episode number 154 and you'll get your answers. Because quite honestly, it is, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. There are a lot of decisions, like I said, to be made. But this episode is all about helping you figure out which resort you should stay in on your Walt Disney World trip. Here to talk all about how to choose the best Walt Disney World resort for you and your family. With me is my wife, Amy Liz. Ames, is your tongue out? I'm looking over my shoulder. No. <laughs> She's been trying to stick her tongue out and make me laugh for the last... This is, by the way, this is the third take of trying to record this podcast because... Third time's the charm, The first two, I didn't like the way they were going. No, he didn't. I stared at Amy and Amy just didn't talk back and I knew something was going on. All right, so... So, Ames, how are you? How's everything going? How's your life been? It's going great. My life has been amazing. Good. Good. That's good to hear. (laughs) Just in general. And in the past 10 minutes. And in the past 10 minutes, we tried to record three times. (laughs) So the way we're going to do it is the way you said to do it, because we tried to do it my way and it didn't work. And I am man enough to admit when my ideas stink and my ideas stunk. It didn't work. It just didn't, it wasn't the right format for us. It wasn't a flowing format. That's correct. It was stalling. That's true. And I was, I was looking at you when you weren't talking and I knew it was stalling. (laughs) Sorry. Because you're never at a loss for words. Hey. (laughs) It's true. That's true. No, it's 100% true. We, neither of us are. That's why we're good on this podcast. So. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it a little differently. We're going to help you decide which is the best Walt Disney World Resort for you by kind of going into a few of them uh, in detail, and then you figure out what you know which level works for you. Because, And as we go up, we're going to go from uh, least expensive to kind of the most expensive category, and we'll work our way up. So let's start with the value resorts, okay? Right. So I always say... The value resorts are good. Like I asked my clients, the value resorts are really good if you want to sleep, shower, and swim. Absolutely. And it also depends on your family 
I mean, I'm sorry, and your party, because do you have a lo- like a good amount of little kids? You know what I mean? Do you have, is it just you and your spouse? It really depends on who is coming with you. Um, but it can be, the Valley Resorts can be perfect. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly, that's a really good point. It depends on, like, are you coming with the grandparents? Are you coming with, you know, and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, are you coming with a large party? Are you coming with a small party? Like, yeah, I, that makes a lot of sense. It also depends, I think, on how often you're going to go to Walt Good point, right? yes. So if this is a lot of people have, I've been saving for five years for this trip, we're not going to go for another five years. Then maybe you don't go to a Valley Resort. You've been saving for a long time. You, you know, you're excited to spend a lot of time in your resort. But if you're going to go, you know, once a year or even once every other year, um, then the Valley Resort could be perfect for you. Agreed. Now, when we're talking value resorts, we're talking all star music, right. all star sports, all star movies, the uh, pop or the pop century, pop century. <laughs> Why do they call it the pop century? I don't know. <laughs> and the well, art of animation resort. Right. So, art of animation is almost like value, like extra or value moderate slash light. Moderate. Yeah, moderate yeah. light. I love that because it's, it's it bridges the gap between the two. It's, it's, it's definitely more expensive than the other four and it does have more it offers more sure so here's where here's where you go all the 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 least expensive as far as price goes and i'm not i can't get into specific prices because it changes all the time all the time but (laughs) the three all-stars are going to be your least expensive resorts right standard room with the three all-stars that's kind of as long as it goes they're going to be the most i would say like Typical resort experience, like that outside of Walt Disney World. Yes, so that's a good way so, to say it. yeah, no, it you reminds you of. <laughs> that's a great point. It reminds you of a hotel chain outside of Walt Disney right. World, right? Right. The themings. When I say minimal, that's putting it, putting it a little. Le- yeah, because it's not minimal. Look, when you're saying all star sports, there are giant baseballs and footballs and right. basketballs. They're still theming. When you're saying all star music, there's a giant, you know, Dalmatian and. We're saying all star or pop century. There's a giant big wheel on a giant Rubik's cube. Yeah, huge Rubik's cube. All these cube, things yes. and, and bowling <laughs> pins and all this stuff. So it's not minimal. Minimal? Did I say minimal? <laughs> you did. Minimal. Wasn't that the horse on Sophia the First? <laughs> no, that's minimal. <laughs> yeah. Minimal. Minimal the horse, played by Eric Stone Street um, for Modern Family fame. Uh, so no. So it's not minimal theming, but it is less theming and definitely different theming than a moderate. The Lux, the Lux Villa Resorts. That's absolutely true. Would you say it's less, like, immersive? That's probably a good way to say That's it, right? That's a perfect way to say it. Okay, so we'll get to the more immersive places in a bit. But, yes. yeah, I think that's a really good way to say it. It's, right. it you make up, made a really, really good point. If you're used to staying at, you know, what, what you would get at a Hampton Inn or a Holiday Inn or something like that, that's kind of what the rooms and what the... It's like one of those chain resorts with a Disney splash. Yeah, oh, well, that's the, a good way to re- say it, the, yes. The, the and by the way, there's nothing values. wrong with that. No, listen. We have little kids. We know how hard it is to save for oh, a Disney yes. trip, right? And also, what if you're... you're the average family with two and a half kids and you're saving for Who has five... Who I know, it's a weird thing, right? Why do people say <laughs> Very that? Very weird. But I just it's in my like lexicon now. I don't know why <laughs> I know. it's in there. It's in my head and it's, sometimes it comes out. But... If you're saving for years and you could only, or even if you're not, even if you could afford to go once a year, but you could only afford to stay at a value right. resort, it's it, it's great for what what they are. Absolutely. And it also, I'm sorry, I should say too. No, when no, no. Picking, you have to be sorry. This is, this is a conversation. <laughs> when picking your resort, you also have to think about your priorities on the trip too, right? Like, yeah, that's so a great point. It, it really makes sense. So are you guys... Are you, you got your party really excited to eat in, you know, the more expensive restaurants? Okay, well then if you're going to want to spend more money on the dining plan or just at the restaurants, then you aren't necessarily going to worry about the room. You are a smart lady. That's Thank a great you. point. Thank you. I, I love that point because, yes, or are look you, at where you want to put your money for absolutely. the trip. Absolutely. And are you going to do, we call it like a commando trip where you wake up. Don't. Um, it's not that kind of commando, listener. <laughs> it's different. What, you know, one listener right now is like, wait a minute. <laughs> What do these grandmas do on vacation? <laughs> no, you wake. This I think is more like if you have older kids, like teenagers. You know, you wake up, you get ready. Yeah, you eat on it. You grab a. You grab a bot. Like you have stuff in your room for breakfast, right? You have pop tarts. You get up, get a cup of coffee, get clothes on, grab a pop tart as you're walking out the door, right? Right, right. And you run out, and you are planning to spend 
from the beginning of the day to the end of the day in the parks. And a lot of times that includes more than one park. So we're talking about park, park hoppers. And if you want to do that every day, then you're not going to be spending that yeah, much time. Why spend the money for a moderate or a deluxe? Exactly. It makes no sense. Exactly. If you're in the park from open to close. Right. Again, you're sleeping and showering in exactly. the room. That's it. And, and All-Star is perfect. And I'm you don't wonderful. have to shower. I mean, if you're going to swim, well, why shower? I'm not judging. I'm not judging the showering. <laughs> There's a pool. Just jump in the pool. <laughs> totally. Good. You're that's in Disney. Chlorine, doesn't that clean you? Totally. It kills all the germs. <laughs> so, no, that's a great point. If, if you're, you have to look at where you're going to put your money. Like, if you're going to put it into the dining plan, into 10-day park hoppers or 5-day park hoppers even, yeah, then then why you don't if you're gonna be in the park from open to close, why spend the money on a moderate or deluxe? But we as parents to little kids, they're getting older and they're getting they're able to do much more in the day than they were when they were very little, but we still can't do the commando trip. No. When and you and I were t- were first married or when we were dating, well, that's what we, how we did it. Absolutely. You got up in the morning, you got yourself breakfast on the way out the door, and you got to the park at open and you left at 11, 12, 1 o'clock when the park closed. Right. That's what we did. Absolutely. But now, you know, you have little kids, you have to kind of look at the expectations of, this is very overwhelming. Absolutely. Like, th- like you have like two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds. It's a lot on them. It's, like a baby, babies don't know the difference. They'll just no. be in a stroll all day. <laughs> but it's really tiring. Especially, actually, I think it's actually more tiring for kids our age, which is six and eight, because they actually, we expect them to walk a lot more. Yeah. So they're the ones that actually need the hotel room break. Yes. Thank God, thank God the strollers are gone. <laughs> because as Amy will tell you, I was the stroller captain on every trip. So... Like I we, think you made that title up. Yeah, I did. I made that. I made that up. I did make. I like that. I like stroller captain. <laughs> Fair enough. You can have. You have it. to salute me, captain. <laughs> captain. <laughs> Wait, all right. Salute's fun. You know how to salute a nod, a nod. Like you know those. I did both. Or a bow. Oh, every time. Or... <laughs> so, as the honorary stroller captain or the self-titled stroller captain of the trip, the bus we, we had the kids in the strollers, and we get to our bus or the monorail. Not the monorail because you can walk on with the stroller. The buses or a lot of the boats, you have to collapse the strollers before you get on, get the kids out. We'd always have a bag or two, diaper bags, kids' lunch boxes. Oh, it was all crazy. kinds of stuff. And Amy would get on I would help Amy get on the bus with the kids, get them <laughs> seats, I still had the three kids. And then run back off the bus right. to collapse the strollers and bring them back on the bus. Bus drivers are super good about letting you, you know, waiting for that. But thank God I don't have to do that anymore because yeah, that was a pain. Really- in the hiney. <laughs> it was tough. Um, so, all right. So, where were we? So, we're talking values still. Right. So, yeah. So, like, so we talked about standard rooms. Um, like, that's standard rooms fit four people in a value, four adults, up to four adults. Uh, preferred rooms fit four. Fit four. So, the, basically, the, the all-stars pop and art of animation in a standard rooms fit four people. And the preferred and, and water view and pool view and all that. It's all four adults. Then you go up to the suites. Right. So all star music and, and for larger parties, right? Yes. So all star music and um, the art of animation have the large family suites available. They're That's awesome. Great that they're available, by the way. Yeah, and they're great for like, like we've stayed in them. Um, we we stayed in art of animation. Uh, what was oh, that it? Was great. Lion King suite last year. Oh, I love that. It's a great room. Uh, the resort is really really cool. I like that resort a lot. I love that resort. Um, it's a little loud. Let's be for real. It's very family friendly. Yeah. So it's if you're in the, if you're at lunch, breakfast, dinner time in the cafeteria there, expect a billion people. Anarchy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of kids, a lot of families. Listen, still great service, awesome food. Food's really good actually. I got a cheeseburger there last time we were there. It was really, really good. But I want to know I want you to know that when you go to Art of Animation, when you go to All Star, when you even go to Pop. It's the value resorts for a reason because there's a lot of families and a ton of kids that are there. So if you're looking to maybe, I don't know why it's Walt Disney World. And this is this kind of goes without saying, but if you're looking to have less of a kids all over the place experience, maybe bump it up to moderate. Do you think? Right, I agree. In your opinion, yes. Um, but if you don't care, if you're not bothered, like I would never be bothered by kids. They don't bother me at all. Me neither. And in fact, I actually I think... enjoy watching kids have fun. <laughs> me too. But I think although the kids that were running around at Art of Animation food court, I was like, oh my god. Oh yeah. Like, well, that has nothing. Like to their do. parents got to get on this. Yes. Like, I, listen, I'm not a strict dad, but I was like, whoa. 
like kids are running around throwing things at each other. I was like, crazy. Whoa. Anyway, I'm sorry. But, we no, but I was actually, that's to my point. That for the kids, they love oh, it's amazing. <laughs> all-star art of animation and pop. It's really fun for them because they don't have to worry. Like you, Not that you don't have to be on your best behavior, but you know, you're know you not worried about disturbing other people as much. You can be a little bit louder. You can you know get all of the kids that's true. that you it, want. That's a good, really good point is the kids can let loose a little bit yes. more. And you don't have to worry about it and, as much. And for me, that's kind of... Which I don't think you should have to worry about it at all at, in Disney World, but people... We've got looks. Be, We've got well, looks. there have to be um, certain, I think, certain you know restaurants. In, I, I agree. And in even resorts that uh, adults can just be adults. I, I totally agree with that. And there are. Absolutely there are. A ton. There are. We'll get there are a ton. Them. But <laughs> what I don't like is, and our kids are very well behaved. I, I brag about it all the time. <laughs> I don't want someone to shoot me a look because my kid's being loud right. or singing at breakfast in a food court at no, All Star Music. You're in, right. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's that. Remember where you are. You shouldn't go to Walt Disney World, my friend, um, <laughs> if you're not having, if that makes you upset. Right. But yeah, no. So I would say like a huge benefit if you are going to stay at an all-star at Art of Animation for me is actually the food court. It's a great place. The like, food courts are really good there. Yeah. It's perfect. You know, it, they're open. I feel like so much. Yeah. I don't day. have the hours in front of me. They're open the majority of the day. And they have yeah. and basically any kind of Six o'clock probably they open six or seven and they probably close it. 10 or 11 That's on average. Amazing. And they have basically any kind because, of food you want. Because, listen, here's another thing about the value resorts. There are no table service restaurants at any value resort. Oh, right, right. So the reason they're open so long is because it's the place to get food. That and, like, the, you know, the store, the, the Disney, the store's on property. But another reason to stay at a, again, we'll talk about it in a minute, but to bump up to a moderate is all moderates have at least one table service. Right. Uh, the, the, the values do not. But it's not a big if, – if you're not – again, it depends on what your family's doing. If you're the commando family, you don't need a table service restaurant. You do resort. not. If you were – If you're in the family with very little kids, you also don't need a table right, service. Right, right. Um, so, yeah. So, that's another thing. And All right. So, let's talk about pools, right? Yes. The pools – I was just thinking about pools. Also, and all three values uh, – four values are awesome. Another great reason to say because that's when you are taking the resort break – the kids are going to want to go to the pool. And well, the you pools, are. The pools are great at all four because they're really, like, fun themed, right? Really fun themed. Like, thinking about, like, the the pool at Wilderness Lodge. It, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful pool. It's got amazing, like, architecture, amazing surroundings. I would say it's not as much fun right. as the pool for kids at Art of Animation. Oh, yeah, that one's amazing. Guess what the pool of Art of, Art of Animation has? That the Tell me. <laughs> underwater music. Oh, my goodness. Where else can you get that? Go underwater and you hear music. That's get incredible. Get your head out of the water, no music. Underwater music. Out of the water, no music. So when your kids go underwater. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when your kids go under the water, they hear under the sea. Or they hear. That is so cool. I just can't wait to be king or whatever from the movies. So that's I really fun. I can't wait to be king. No. <laughs> that is really a cool another I'm like show for a minute, Ace. okay <laughs> that's just another awesome touch and as you said like they're not really as much with the theming but i guess really the value resorts do theme yeah like, like i said like it's a it's it's a you put the theme a, where you need them in the value resorts right like exactly. emphasis on the theme at the pool and um the outside as you said right with the great like huge sports balls and all of that that is really fun it is. when you are a kid and you pull up to all sorts of sports you're like this is amazing yeah because like, you see the big x's and o's and and especially art i'm sorry art of animation too as you said the lion king suite i felt like i was in the lion king it's like, really well done it yeah. was on everything was lion king it was really cool so the suites you get at art of animation you have the, the finding nemo suites which are the, the closest suites to the main building they're generally more expensive than the other ones uh you have the car suites the lion king suites and there's one more. Did you say Little Mermaid? Little Mermaid are the standard rooms. Oh, right. Uh, Cars, Lion King. Is it only Cars, Lion King, and Finding Nemo? I think that's right. Uh, and then, yeah, that's right. And then the Little Mermaid are the standard rooms uh, in the resort. For those of th that don't know the story with Art of Animation, it was being built as the second half of, the, of Pop Century. Uh, then 9-11 happened, and it sat abandoned for years. Like right, literally, you could be a pop century, 
look across the way and see a chain link fence with half built buildings behind it for years after 9 11. And then finally, when they decided to actual, actually move forward with construction, Disney decided, well, let's make it this big, big resort with suites. So those rooms that were built, the standard rooms, they became the Little Mermaid suites, or the Little Mermaid rooms. And all the new ones they built became the family suites. Yes. And those family suites are wonderful, you guys. They they're, really are. They're really cool. So they have, uh, they sleep up to six uh, adults, which is really cool. They have a, little, a separate bedroom and a bathroom. Uh, there's two ba- two bathrooms. Uh, there's a, be- a, a queen bed in a, in a bedroom with a separate bath. And then there's um, a pull-out couch bed and a pull-down table bed. That's the coolest one. Which are really cool. Yeah. The, 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 you the, guys, it's a table, but also a bed. Yeah, the bed comes out How of the wall and like, lays on the table. It's a really cool thing. It's really cool. The kids thought that was awesome. Oh, that was their favorite part of the Yeah, they, they were just like blown away. I mean, who wouldn't think that was amazing? It's, a, it's pretty similar to the cruise, right? To the Murphy bed on the cruise Very coming similar, out of the wall. Yeah. Like the kids thought that was amazing. Oh, yeah. Because they come <laughs> out. You come in the root cruise in the room, the family state room on a cruise in general, and there's a couch and one bed. And it's this big open area. And then you come back at night and there's like four beds. Right. And you're like, whoa. I know. <laughs> what happened? How did that happen? Where did these beds come from? Was that magic? There's literally four beds. There's the bunk it's beds, true. the queen bed, and then another Murphy bed. It's amazing. So it's a cool thing. Anyway, all right. So let's move on. So we, I think we covered everything at the, at the, all, at the values, right? Do you I think? think we did a great job. Well, I will say um, that... It's also if you you know if you are driving or um, if you guys are cool taking the bus, that's great too. Like if, if you don't care about taking the monorail or having needing a boat, it's that's a really good point actually to make at the end. Good job. Thank you. Um, no, it's great. Like we we love the buses actually. Yeah. Um, and it's they're they're fun. They're easy. Um, and it's that's one thing about the Valley Resorts. So right, and one thing that I want to mention too is uh, Art of Animation has a dedicated bus. Pop Century usually, unless it's super, super busy, has a dedicated bus. The All-Stars lots of times will share buses. Okay. So know that if you're going in, that sometimes you'll have to drop off at another resort as well as your own. It's going to be a little bit longer of a week. Right. So if you have- But if the you great have... thing is, I'm sorry, I was just going to yeah. say, because I think this is so important, and I don't know if everyone knows this, now they have these humongous screens that are constantly being updated at the bus stop that tells you when the buses are coming. So I think that's super helpful. I really like it when you get, you know it's where it's really, really helpful? When you get to a bus stop, and it's like it shows like 20 minutes. No, yeah. And you're like, oh, great. I can run and do something else. That's exactly like, what like I was Not go say. do it in an attraction. But if you forgot something in a room, right. or if you needed to get something from the store, or, or you forgot sunscreen, or if you, <laughs> or if you have a kid, let's say, who is looks like they're gonna fall asleep, oh, we'll just walk around. You know what I mean? Like just right. walk them or put them in the coach or whatever. And it's just it's really helpful. So even if it is a little bit of a longer wait at All Star, let's say it's not a big deal because you always know that it's gonna happen. That's good. Yeah. So you, you know always I mean? have, you have the time. A heads up. And the time can change. We've seen it like where it'll say like yeah, but usually it's only nine thirty seven. Then two minutes later it's like nine thirty nine. And two minutes later, it's nine forty-one. But yeah, usually it's pretty pretty accurate, right? And it will move, so you can see, you can keep up with it. It's not like it's going to say nine thirty-seven, and then it'll be nine forty-five, but the sign will still say nine thirty-seven. No, no, it's constantly it updates, updating. Yeah. So yeah, I like that. That's a really good point. Uh, so awesome. So I think we covered everything at the the values. So if you so th- th- let's recap. Value resorts are perfect for people who are you know on a on a tighter budget, right? They're perfect for people for families. Who were going to go commando style. Right. Perfect. <laughs> it's still making me laugh. <laughs> perfect for couples who are doing the same thing. Absolutely. Perfect. perfect ah, why can't I speak? Perfect for people who are going to sleep, shower, and swim. What the heck is that? Yeah, some people, that's true. Some people like to stay on Disney property. Maybe they're going to only go to the parks a couple of days, but they, they want to swim. That's cool, too. Right. Sorry. I said, what the heck is that? Because my screensaver just came on. I never, that was weird. I've never seen that. I don't have a screensaver on this computer. <laughs> Like, that's just supposed to run. That was the weirdest thing. That was really weird. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So, let's move on to the moderate resorts. I'm in. And I'm not even editing that out because it was a funny moment. It was really funny. Uh, so, let's move on to the moderates. So. Can we start with Port Orleans? Yeah. Well, we can. Let's just Riverside. talk. We, let's use that as an example because it's our favorite moderate. <laughs> it is our favorite moderate. It's Port Orleans Riverside. You know why? Because it's amazing. And it's because one that Amy hasn't worked at. I think you... <laughs> <laughs> the ones you don't love are the ones you've worked at. Oh, no, I still love them. I have a soft spot in my heart. For Coronado? Yes. Not for Caribbean Beach. Yes. No, I was only there five days. Yeah, so... You, and Caribbean Beach is so different than it was. Yeah, it, I don't uh, remember it's a, it. Now it's a completely no, different No, I love port. my Coronado. So, uh... We should actually talk about Coronado in this 
podcast. Yeah, but we're, that's, what we're, that's what we're doing. That's why we're having this podcast. <laughs> I mean, we should use that as an example. So let's talk uh, moderate resorts and who. Do you want to start with kind of what what who they're perfect for and why they're perfect for? Yeah, is that how we did? The, that's how we did the other one. That's right. right. All right, you get, you get started. Right. So moderate resorts are are definitely more expensive than the values. Um, they're still, you know, definitely less expensive um, than the category above. And they um, they do, as you said, they do provide you with a sit down restaurant. Um, table service for table those service. who'd like the proper terminology. Table service restaurant. <laughs> um, they definitely, as we said, have more theming. Um, and the rooms um, are bigger. Are bigger. Yeah. So they are. You know, you're going to want to spend more time in them, um, I would think. So, if like for us, our kids, half of the reason they go to Disney is to hang out in the room. They love, they the, love, doing they love the hotel rooms, yeah. Um, so, you know, if you have, you know, kids, your kids are a little bit older, um, or I, we loved it when we were single. I think that was maybe the only place we stayed, or when we were dating, the only place we stayed <laughs> was Port. Um, we did. We stayed there pretty much every trip. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I think they're perfect for that kind of, those parties. Yeah. So, l- just go through through the uh, logistics really quick. So, again, they have, um, most of the resorts are for, have uh, a standard occupancy of four adults. Uh, you can get five adults in the, the fifth sleeper rooms. So, at Coronado and at uh, Port Orleans Riverside, they have the fifth sleeper rooms, which is where we stay. When we go and we're staying at a moderate with our kids because we have five. So we'll get, you have the fun little pull down bed at Port Orleans Riverside. Oh, yeah, it is fun. So they just redid. There's some, Great they're, theming there. Oh, my goodness. So those rooms, all those rooms in the alligator bayou section now have more of a princess and the frog theme overall. Yes, that's, that's true. new. No, it's, it's brand new. Oh, it's new. Oh, cool. So then, so the shower curtains have like Tiana on them. Yes, because I remember that little bed was like the Ray bed. That yeah, was so the, cool. The, you pull down the, the, under the TV, there's a, a bench. And the, so you can sleep on it. Yeah, it pulls out the, the, of the wall, kind of again like a Murphy bed, but in a different angle than a Murphy bed. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and there's the what's what's the alligator's name? Louis. 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 Yeah. Louis? And Ray are on the no, bed. No, uh, and what's really funny is I think it has a maximum weight capacity of like 150 <laughs> pounds, and I was definitely more than that. And I slept on it <laughs> like you two were- nights. Because the kids wanted to sleep in the big beds, and I was like, "Whatever, I don't care. I'll I guess sleep I'm in sleeping that. on this little." Bed. So I'm like, "Oh, I'm not a big person. I'm five foot seven, but I was all, you know, curled up in this little tiny pullout bed." <laughs> but you slept fine. That was all right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it wasn't it wasn't the the biggest, most luxurious bed in the world, but <laughs> for a kid, it's perfect. Yes. So yeah, so there are the fifth sleeper rooms, um, and then there's suites over it. I think Coronado has a couple suites, the the, the junior suites and stuff. Uh, you know, they sleep five. Um, they're a little more expensive. So yeah, so as Amy was saying, like you got the 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 table service restaurants. Now, uh, Caribbean Beach has a whole bunch of new table service restaurants. Oh yeah, that's cool. like Sebastian's and a couple couple other ones that opened that's over exciting. there. Port Orleans, Riverside. Actually, I'm lying. I'm completely lying about this because not all of them have a table service. Port Orleans French Quarter does not. I just realized. That's true. They just had the food court over there. They, they used to. They used to have Bon Famille's. Is that how you say it? That was my favorite. Oh, 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 bon Famille. I loved that place. They closed that place years ago, though. They did. So that is the one that doesn't have it. But they do have the table service, and they have the lounge as well. Right. Uh, the Scat, what is it? Scat Daddy, whatever it is, lounge uh, over there. I know. Scat something lounge. Um, and then there's the, the River Roost Lounge at Port Orleans Riverside, of course. Where yeah, Bob Jackson plays four nights a week, and it's really, really an awesome show. That's basically like all reason to stay there. It's one of the reasons we stay there, <laughs> if not the reason we stay there all the time. It's true. What's for Bob's show? We would drop like six hundred dollars a night <laughs> <laughs> seeing Bob Jackson. No, you can go and not have a drink or not have any food. You can sit at the table. Oh, it's just a great experience. And it's just a lot of fun. You can it can you can be any age. It doesn't matter. It's fun for everyone. I, I I interviewed Bob way back on like episode. I don't oh know, yeah, it's like nine or ten or something of the show. Uh, it's a fun interview. It's a really fun show. I was before I knew how to interview people, so it's not the greatest performance by me as I'm far sure as the interview fun. goes. But it's it was fun. And Bob's a, he's a really really nice guy, and uh, that he's been doing the show for twenty plus years there. So it's an amazing show. I think he's the best free entertainer on Disney property, probably by far, and uh, a real real really really good reason. To stay at Port Orleans Riverside is Bob. Uh, so, 
You have a free show four nights a week. Yeah. That's it, unbelievable. You can't beat it. And it's so much fun. And it's a great way to wind down at the end of the day, too. Like, you're in the it parks is. all day. I think he even set, he sings about it in, a, uh, is it the Sweet Caroline? When he says something about when you uh, walk through the parks all day or something. Yes, I think uh, it is. He's like, you know, you come to Disney World and your feet are hurting or something. It's just a great show. So Bob's a great reason to stay at Portland's Riverside. The food is a great reason to stay at Port Orleans Riverside. The food is amazing. So Boatwright's menu years ago changed to kind of a New Orleans Cajun kind of style menu. It's really fun. It's really unique. It is. I really love the food there. Me too. We've gotten, uh, I got, they have the crawfish, like bites appetizer, which are really good. Uh, it's just a, it's a fun place to jump a lion. and they have gumbo and they have. Yeah, it's just different kind of food. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, like New Orleans style, like legit. Yeah, really, po' boys. Yeah. Like a legit, um, you know, restaurant, New Orleans style restaurant, and then they have the the uh, cafeteria over there. On the name is escaping me, the mill I don't something. It. Con- I'm sorry, something mill. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, mill. I think you're right. I forget the name. Of I've it. been there so many times. There's, I know we've eaten in that place a hundred <laughs> times. Let me. Well, you know what? I want to look it up as we're talking. Okay. Um. So you you talk for a second while okay. I look it up. Um, well, I just think in general, the theming in that particular resort, is so cool. Like even just walking through it, being outside, like you said, like it's called the alligator bayou. That's a section of rooms. That's so fun. Yes. I, I can't look it up. Where the heck is it? Um, <laughs> it is the, okay. it's, it's something mill and, and um, something mill, old mill, something Riverside mill. I don't know. Uh, general Jim's mill, something like that. <laughs> But no, I love, I, you're right, I love the outside of it, the look of the, the big uh, water wheel outside the, yes. the lo- I mean, outside the restaurant, the lobby itself with the giant, like, I think they're fans. Yes, I think they're kind they of are. swaying back and forth. It's really uh, cool. Up real high in the lobby. Uh, it's a really, really great resort. So anyway, off of uh, Port Orleans Riverside, there's also, you know, Caribbean Beach, there's Coronado. Uh, there is, technically, a, another modern resort is... Um, the cabins at uh, Fort Wilderness right, are right. I've never priced can say I've as never a moderate. So that has up to it's again up to six people. Right. Uh, it has an outdoor grill and like little deck. There's a full kitchen, full refrigerator, stove, all that That's stuff. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, it's a really neat place to stay if you have a bigger party. If you're gonna plan on cooking your own food, yeah, I think it's a good way to do it. And I think a lot of you know some people do that. Some people, yeah. Why I mean, not? especially over at uh, Fort Wilderness, some people bring their campers and stay for. You know, months at a time. Right. Literally, like, they're there from Halloween through the New Year. That's really fun. And decorate the <laughs> campers for, for Halloween and for Why Christmas. Not? and But, yeah, so uh, that's another, it's another moderate resort there for you. The pools at the moderates are really, really cool. They are. Uh, I love, again, I love the Port, the Port Orleans Riverside pool. It's on Old Main Island. It's got the, the bar over there. Oh, right. That's so uh, fun. The, yeah, like the little, the, the outdoor bar by the pool. You can go, uh, you can go fishing at. Port Orleans Riverside. I'm, I just, I I'm back to Port Orleans Riverside because I love it. But <laughs> they have a little, it. they have a catch and release program with a fishing pole, right? Like an old school fishing pole that you use uh, on Old Man Island, and you can actually go fishing, which is really fun. That is really fun. <coughs> um, so I just, I feel like I should talk a tiny bit about Coronado, just because I did work there for a while, and you know, I think sometimes Coronado gets a bad rap. Um, I, I definitely think that, and I think it's because people don't necessarily know. Exactly what it is, which Coronado, at least generally, right, is a convention resort. So it's generally people who are there, you know, for work with the convention. That's where they stay. Um, so if you're a family staying in Coronado, are you going to be able to have a great experience? Absolutely. But it's different. Um, you know, but what I do want to say, what's amazing about Coronado is they do such a great job. If you know, sometimes when you um, go and check into your hotel, you want to be there and you want to be checking in and talking to everyone and finding out everything, you know, basically planning your trip um, at the front desk. But other times you've been to Disney a lot and you just want to get in there, check into your room and go. Um, you know, if you're rushing to the park or whatever it is. And for Coronado, they are really good at having a streamlined check-in process, which is really um, a benefit a lot of times. And now, I mean, of course, do the online check-in too, which you you don't have to talk to anybody. That's true. <laughs> and that's available for all the resorts where you have a package reservation. They send you your magic bands. You have them on your wrist when you get to the park or get to the hotel. You don't even need to go to the front desk. Right. You use your phone. You check in before you even get there. They send you an email or a text and say, your room is ready. It's 
246. That's and amazing. You go to it, and that's it. <laughs> right. You never have to mess with the front desk. You never have to do anything. You just go right to your right. room. Uh, that's a really cool option. So, yeah, if you're looking to just look into that and, and you know, to look into online check in, you can make your request right there in the web, on the website for if you want a room close to the lobby, if you want to, you know, you want a room on the first floor, whatever, you can make those, those recommend or those. What were they looking for? Reservations? No. The oh, requests. Requests. I don't know if you have an R. Right there on your on the app or on the website on your phone. Uh, so it's really super easy. Um, all right. So let's do a little. So let's recap the moderates. If, if Okay. You, oh, yes. no, you got something to say. Go yeah, No, no, no. It's, this is with the recap. But I don't think that we stressed enough how awesome it is. In a, I think a big advantage to the moderates is having the table service restaurant. Oh, and with the theming, too. We didn't really get into oh, the, the theming. Oh, the theming is unbelievable. But I do think having a table service restaurant at your resort is a very big deal for certain parties. Because, you know, when you're in the parks, a lot of times you, you grab a counter service lunch, let's say, right? But by the time you are, you know, going to dinner, you want to uh, just to sit down and have a table service. But you don't necessarily make it in the park the whole day. So don't don't worry about it. <laughs> Go to the park, have your table, I mean, your counter service lunch, then come back to the resort. You can even get changed if you want. I don't care. You don't have to shower or you can. <laughs> and then you can go. Listen, and if you're going in the and summer a... and you're sweaty all day, take a shower. Probably. But <laughs> or jump in the pool. And sit down in your own resort. <clears throat> you can go and sit down at a wonderful restaurant that's beautifully themed. They're all very unique. Um, they're very specific to the theme of the resort. And it's that's a huge benefit. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I kind of was going to gloss right over that. And I'm glad you didn't let me. Uh, cause, You're welcome. Yeah, because it is it is nice <laughs> to have. And they're generally, uh, you have a better chance of getting reservations for those. Absolutely. Closer to your debt. Like, if you want to go to Be Our Guest, if you want to go to Skipper Canteen, if you want to go to, you know, Akershus or one of those, the your chances of getting in, you know, two weeks or a week before are tough, right? But a lot of the resort reservations the resort um re restaurants won't completely book up or you'll be able to walk in and get a reservation a too. lot of times you can walk in which is amazing yeah so like the, the moderate resorts lots of times you'll have a half hour wait or 20 minute wait or an hour even an hour kind of pales in comparison to being told at be our guests we're not taking any walk-ins like it right. happens all the time oh sure we i remember sitting at be our guest on that bridge there that leads into the restaurant and we had checked in Oh, right. And you, me and one of our kids, I think it was Zoe, uh, checked in. And you and Jack and Lex were finishing at, at Bell's, uh, and Janet Dales with Bell. I love that. And we checked in, and then a server was like, is your whole party here? And I was like, no. Um, they're like, all right, well, you have to wait for your whole party. I was like, darn. So we were sitting on the, we were sitting waiting for you guys. And couple after family after couple after family were coming up to the poor cast members <laughs> at BR Guys and saying, uh, two, please. And they would say, do you have a reservation? And I would say, no. And they would say, we aren't seating anyone because <laughs> it's full. It's at, so like every, full. Even now when it's a two-table service credit on a dining plan still. and it's a fixed uh, price meal. Oh, it's still so hard to get into. Yeah, it's still tough. Still one of the toughest reservations in all of Walt Disney World. So one of the bonuses of having that um, table service restaurant at your minor resort is that you can get in kind of not last minute, but much more last minute than in the parks with their more famous restaurants i totally agree and then the theming we didn't really go into no we didn't which listen again the theming is a big step up from the values it of the really moderates. is it's like, very noticeable you want to feel like you're in the french quarter in new orleans <laughs> oh you, stay you really do french quarter. yeah you really do feel like that you want to feel like you're staying somewhere in the is it caribbean beach or caribbean beach caribbean beach <laughs> caribbean queen <laughs> I know. As soon as I said it, I, I knew I was going to the Billy Ocean song. No, we Can all knew that. Be a beach. We all knew that. Now we're going to the hotel. A uh, singer, you crack, are not, my friend. Crack myself up. No, I'm not a singer. I got nah, not a singer. But you, you give the biggest effort. I do. I really try. That's all you can ask for. All right. Uh, now with this cold that you heard, heard me coughing and breathing really funny. <laughs> the, 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 I think. I think the cold hurts it a bit. I think it enhances it. <laughs> <laughs> Caribbean Beach. Oh, no, he's still doing it. You guys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, uh, Caribbean Beach. Anyway, uh, the theming is if you want to feel like you're in a Caribbean, on you know an island resort somewhere, that's what you're going to feel like. Absolutely. Beach. 
if you want to feel like, you know, you're in a pirate room, go. You, if you want to be a pirate for your trip, stay in a pirate room in Coronado. Isn't that really cool that it's an option to just be a pirate? Your pirate, there? your your bed is a pirate. I've heard ship. that is amazing. I've not gotten the chance. So I, I've, I've seen it. I've toured it. I haven't right. stayed in one of those rooms. I booked it for Marathon Weekend. That's right. Uh, just a few weeks ago, and I didn't. I, and we we decided that I wouldn't be running in Adobe this year because just family things and obligations and a puppy and life happens. Yeah, like I didn't make the trip, um, so I didn't get a chance to to stay. But I've been there. I mean, the rooms are awesome. Like you want to feel it's it's a pirate room. That's I mean, I love pirates. You can't really be- get better than that, right? Yeah, you're not getting a better like, and it's not like over the top cheesy. No, it's like, just cool and like fun. Captain Hook and no, it's it's like. Pirates of the Caribbean, um, Curse of the Black Pearl Pirate Room. Right. Like black, like the black flag and all. It's really a cool thing. Uh, so, yeah. So, it, the moderate resorts really do ratchet it up. You want to feel like you're in the bayou, you go to Port Orleans Riverside. You want to feel like, you know, you're in literally in a cabin in the wilderness. Right. Go to the uh, the cabins in uh, Fort, Fort Wilderness. It's, it really does feel like that. They do an uh, So, yeah. Job. So, the, the theming is... is Definitely taking up a, a big notch in the moderate resorts. It is definitely a reason, as I said, you're going to want to stay in your room more. Oh, and the princess that. rooms in uh, oh, right in Port Orleans French Quarter, uh, the or is it Riverside? Riverside, right? Yeah, right. Riverside, yeah, yeah Riverside. I'm sorry, is where the princess rooms are. Uh, Tiana has invited the princesses to come to the resort and stay, and those are the rooms that she puts the princesses up in. So magic carpet on the floor, right? When you go into those, I rooms. mean, come on. The all the pic- That's pictures amazing. pictures are framed to the princesses all around. Uh your your uh your faucet is the magic uh lamp from Aladdin. <laughs> As you said, like so immersive, right? Yeah, it's completely immersive. Compl- and for little girls, the princess rooms are awesome. Yes. For little boys, the pirate rooms are amazing. So yeah, it's it's if you have little kids, think about the moderates. Uh the theming's outrageously there are lots cool. Of reasons. And it's really good for it's really great. I think the moderates are really great for uh, adults like who don't have kids. Oh, like they're perfect. When it, like thinking of Caribbean Beach or thinking of Coronado or Port Orleans Riverside or French Quarter, I think of just a completely. I, I try to tell people like you want to feel like you're somewhere else and not yes, in Walt Disney World. It's a total getaway. Stay in one of these resorts. Total escape. Absolutely. Like totally feel like you're not in Walt Disney World. Uh, they don't have Disney characters at every turn. No. You no, know, it's just a different kind of feel. It's really well done. It's true. If you want a Disney vacation that's not only Disney, <laughs> they're a perfect place. So, all right. So now we're going to talk about the deluxe oh, yeah. resorts, and I'm going to leave. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm going to leave deluxe villas in with the deluxe resorts sure. because it's kind of they're they're brother and sister, right? They're very related. They are very closely related. Uh, but before we get into the, the, the most of the deluxes, let's talk about the deluxe light resorts. Okay. There are two deluxe light resorts in Walt Disney World. I'm in. And they are the lodges. So, Animal Kingdom Lodge and Wilderness Lodge are generally going to cost. I you, love the lodges. <laughs> the, you, the listener, you, the consumer, you, the Disney Park guest, sort of cost you less money. Okay. Than the other deluxe resorts. Uh, just that's that's not every time, but it's a general rule okay. that it's going to cost you less. Um, the rooms are very comparable in size to the other deluxe resorts. Uh, but they are, it's just a little bit different of experience. I love the lodges. I think they're amazing. I'm totally a huge fan of the lodges. So we stayed at both. Uh, we stayed in multiple times at both resorts. Uh, Jumbo House, we stayed in Kidani. We stayed in Wilderness Talk Lodge. Talk about not knowing that you're in Disney. <laughs> really? Is there a cooler room? And I put this up on my Facebook page today, actually. That's funny. Is there a cooler experience than the Savannah View room at well, all right, I'm sorry, I don't think the lodge. I don't think there is. Is there a cooler room to have? <laughs> you, I don't know, maybe club level somewhere, I guess. Probably. But, that but I'm, is... I'm, that's not what I'm about. I'm not about getting everything that I can for free. Right. And the free drinks in the five o'clock somewhere and all that stuff. <laughs> that's fun. It's great. But you can't do that every day. The, I, I mean, I couldn't. The Animal Kingdom Lodge. Yeah, speak for Savannah, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're paying, maybe you are doing it every day. But the Animal Kingdom Lodge Savannah View experience is unlike anything else Disney has. Absolutely. And it's unlike anything else most places have. Nobody has <laughs> no. that. I love, you know, it's funny. It's reminded me of Jim Gaffigan. He talked about staying in hotels. And he's like, I see, he's like, we stayed at Animal Kingdom. And how about, pe- about how people aren't impressed with hotels after a couple of days? Yes. And he's like, 
we stayed. He, he took his kids to the <laughs> Animal Kingdom funny. Lodge. He's like, we stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge. He's like, the first day, I open, I walk, I open the door, I walk out in the balcony. There's there's giraffes and zebras and they're walking around and I'm like, oh my god, this is incredible. He's like, by the third day, I'm like, how about a lion eating a giraffe? Would that be, that'd be fun. <laughs> but it's, it's just funny that his his stand up's great. But you literally, I I stayed there last year for training or a year and a half ago now. I would get my coffee in the morning. I was by myself in a Savannah View room. I would get my coffee. It's amazing. <laughs> I would get my coffee in the morning in my shorts and my t-shirt, open up my balcony door, put my feet up with my phone, and just you know look at my phone, check my emails as I watched all the animals walking by. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's unbeatable. You, you know, 30 feet from you, there I mean, are giraffes again, eating, from, eating most, leaves from trees. It's incredible. It's the most unique experience of, of the resorts, I would say. And, the, and they have... Am I right? They have two, um, uh, what's it called? Table service. <laughs> Table service. So there's Sanaa, there's Boma, and Jico. There's three. But three, right? Three. Yeah, and three different. I mean, they're different places. And different Boma buildings. is the buffet, right? Boma, Boma, Boma. Uh, yeah, Sanaa has. Right. Sanaa is the one with the um the the uh, bread service. Oh yes, I've been there. It's really good. Um. So yeah, the three. Animal Kingdom Lodge, three table service resorts. And you're I mean, going to get restaurants, really, I'm sorry. you're going to get super unique. And you can see there. the animals from the door and, or from the restaurant. That's amazing. Which is an incredible thing, too. But you, you are going to get super unique food. Boma, I would recommend if you're staying there, everyone should try Boma because it is the buffet. I remember going so long ago and it was so many just like brand new foods that I had never heard of that I would never get the opportunity to try otherwise and it's really fun and you know it's a buffet so you can just start with a little bit and then add you know get refills but it's really a really really cool experience and I will say they do have regular like regular breakfast foods and, and regular oh, they foods have, for, I'm sorry they have tons for kids. I'm sorry they have tons but of regular food but if you're going to go there go if, go with it a little bit of an adventurous mind yes only because you can get those other foods anywhere at any other that's buffet. true like they have the standard chicken nuggets and macaroni. Put and those and a little bit on your plate. <laughs> yeah, like don't don't make reservations for Boma and get chicken fingers and fries. Like go and get the the African kind of inspired. It's just food. so cool to be able to experience it. It is, and, and I don't say don't do it, but I'm saying like we have little kids and our kids are picky, right? That's They're true. not going to eat those entrees, no. so we're not going to make reservations to Boma right now. We can't, right? Because the kids they just won't eat it. Uh, but for people who have a little bit more adventurous kids who are going to eat. You know, I, I don't even know what, what the. I'm not even going to try to venture a guess as to what the menu is. <laughs> I forget. But, um, and the bread service is Sanaa is is amazing. Oh, it is. They have you know the the non bread with the like the 45 different kinds of uh, <laughs> sauce that you can and and toppings that you can put on it. Uh, it's an amazing thing. Uh, the resort again, the resort at Animal Kingdom Lodge is incredible. Uh, just walking around, all the views you get from inside the lobby. The views. The, the lobby itself for. Um, for Jumbo House when you walk in, Kidani is is beautiful as well. But Jumbo House when you walk in is like whoa, it's unbelievable. Like it is enormous. It's, it is. It's, it, it's beautiful. At Christmas, the tree is amazing. But you can see the darn animals through the lobby. Yeah, I mean it's it's incredible. So yeah, it's it. This is I think I should say this particular and Wilderness Lodge both lodges are great if you really do want to spend more time at yeah. the resort because you you could you could easily spend a week at Wilderness Lodge or Animal Kingdom Lodge yes. and not go to the parks. Right, because I want to say I actually this is really weird, but I actually was. Did I go twice when I was pregnant? Because I remember being... I mean, no, we actually stayed at both lodges on one trip. Yep. And I was pregnant. I remember I was pregnant with Jack and Zoe. And so I wasn't as parkish. <laughs> um, and yeah, you were like six months pregnant. I was really uncomfortable and very sick. Um, that was crazy. No, but guess what? I remember... We were like, hey, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's Disney in June. What could go wrong? <laughs> This is a great idea, um, but but actually it was a great trip. And um, the fact of the matter was, I was so grateful that we were staying in the lodges because I didn't, I you know, it's a great place to be. I wanted to be in the in the room, and I wanted to you know see the animals. And with Wilderness Lodge, I just can spend every second of my life there. Yeah, there's nothing like Wilderness Lodge. But what's really an important point to make is that a huge, huge benefit especially if you are spending more time in the resort, is the shop. There's a stores. Yes. The in big, yeah. the resorts. And they're amazing. They have, you know, of course they have, you know, a gift shop, whatever you want to call it. But they have, like, you can get groceries. 
Yeah, like that started when these resorts started becoming DVC properties yes. as well. So they have full, like, you full guys, out, like, grocery stores. that's kind of a stores. game changer on your vacation. It is. If, for us, it is. Even if you're, like, we do garden grocer a lot just to get stuff delivered to the to the room for food for the kids and snacks for us. And, you know, we you can get beer and wine. And so we do all that. But if you're, if say you're, you know, you're on your, you're walking through the, the lobby on the way out to the bus and your kid's hungry or you want to drink or they want, you know, I don't know, bag of goldfish. You can get those in the store. Like, it's, it's. Why are you looking at me funny? No, it's just right. No, <laughs> she's giving me a look like I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's nice to have those um, because they're, they're designed. They were originally designed for all the DVC members who were staying there, who were there, you know, and have the, the refrigerator, the full fridge, and the oven and a microwave and stuff in the rooms. So they have like microwave pizzas and all that stuff in there. They have like bacon and eggs if you want to make bacon and eggs. <laughs> they do. They have, they have anything you could want. Yeah, so it's it's a neat it's a neat thing. But it is true that if you aren't st- if you are staying there, but not. You're not sitting in DVC, so you don't have the refrigerator. But there's still a thousand. You have a fridge, snacks. but not a big fridge. It's a small, not a big fridge, like but a dorm still, room there's, fridge. There's still like a thousand snacks, so you know it's a perfect break place. You know, when you're taking a break, go back to the room, hit the store on the way, and you can just sit in your room, look at the animals, um, and just you know, and or if you're at Wilderness Lodge, you have incredible views. Yeah, we didn't really get into Wilderness Lodge at all, and it's it's. Probably my, I, I always say this, I always say it's my favorite <laughs> resort, but it's, it's one of my favorites. Definitely it's, my top, in my top list. So what are the slides? Talk about what it has. It has the- Everything. Well, it has, <laughs> now there's the, the, there's the Geyser Point, there's the Bar and Grill, there's the, the you know, all the, the cabins, all the other stuff that they have. They also have Artist Point, which is now the storybook um, right. character dime. I forgot, right, with Snow White and Seven Snow White. Dwarfs. Uh, dopey, grumpy. You guys, how cool is that? And the evil queen, when you walk in, you meet the evil queen. Oh, fun. She's like, she's like Belle at Akershus. She stays she's the in greeter. one spot. You, yeah, you meet her. Then you have your meal with Snow White, Dopey, okay. and Grumpy. Cool. Uh, they don't eat with you, but they come around the tables. That would be cool. Snow uh, <laughs> so White just comes up. And it's a buffet, right? So like, who's that, bacon? <laughs> <laughs> can you get me some more? <laughs> Yo, can you get me some more? You have to do the, you have to do the Snow White voice. Is that bacon? <laughs> I can't do it. My voice is not there <laughs> for this cold. But um, then you have, of course, um, uh, uh, Whispering Canyon. Whispering Canyon. Sorry, Jeez. I was thinking of some of water. Whispering Canyon, which they tried, uh, the, the the powers that be tried to take away the fun at Whispering Canyon. They tried to tame year, them, but they couldn't and do it. it. And it didn't really happen. Uh, so I'm glad that Whispering Canyon is still a fun mountain place to go. Bottomless I mean, milkshakes. Bottomless milkshakes. Bottom, that's all you have to say. Bottomless if you want to, if you want to take your kids to a great Disney resort and have fun, take them to Wilderness Lodge. Bottomless milkshakes. That's insane. But guess what? I think this this particular Whispering Canyon, in particular, is literally as much fun if you're a kid as if you're an adult. It I is it's, it's so a enjoyable for any age. It's so Disney in that you're just like they encourage you to be loud. The servers make jokes. They're supposed to not make fun of you. They're in character, though. But make fun of you a little bit in a fun way. They literally, this is one of their favorite things, the kids, throw the straws on your table when they they bring the drinks over and they have like 20 straws and they just throw them at you. (laughs) And it's hysterical. And how fun is that? Um, And the food is absolutely delicious. The food's great. The the skillet, the canyon skillet is one of the best things. Unbelievable. And they bring you whatever you want. You want more... Baked beans, you want more ribs, they just keep but bringing it. But if you say, can I have some more baked beans? They don't bring you like a little Oh, no, they just bring you tin. like a bowl. It's like a huge bowl of baked beans. It's like a bucket. It is. <laughs> a bucket of baked beans. It's just, just such a fun experience. It is. And, and we didn't even touch on them. The pool there is amazing. Oh, yeah, it is. I love the, the Trout Pass uh, bar. I love the new, we haven't even been to Geyser Point Bar and Grill yet. No, you're right. Uh, that is apparently a blast. Um, you know, the Roaring Fork, their, table, their counter service place is really fun to go. To uh, you go sit in front of the fireplace and have your coffee in the oh, lobby. That's super fun. Lobby's incredible. Like Lobby's said, amazing. Transportation's really good from Wilderness Lodge. Same as Animal Kingdom Lodge. Animal Kingdom Lodge is a little further out than the other resorts because it's over by Animal Kingdom, so it's at the other end of the map. Right. Uh, on on property. Uh, so your your bus rides. It's all bus from Animal Kingdom Lodge. Your bus rides are a little longer from Animal Kingdom Lodge when you're going to Epcot, Hollywood Studios, or Magic Kingdom. Uh, it's not like a significant big difference though. It's not. Uh, if you have little kids, it might be something that you really kind of get concerned about. True. But I'm talking 20 minutes tops as a ride. 
But I will say, if you're talking about transportation and you're deciding, let's say, between the lodges, the one huge benefit of um, Wilderness Lodge is they have the boat to Magic Kingdom. I like the boat. I really like the boat. I love the boat. It's definitely slower than a bus. It is, but it's so fun. It's fun, and it's like a tranquil and kind of experience. It fits so many people that when you get there, you could almost definitely get onto that. You know, whatever. Yeah, because there's not a lot of people that are getting on it at a time normally. That's true. I, love this it's, I think it's a really fun experience. I really but like it. It does boat. make it much more convenient. It's for the exact example. If you have kids that fell asleep in the in the stroller, you don't have to get them out. You could just push well, it that depends on which boat you get. Usually. Yeah, they have the they have the smaller boats where you have to get them out. You have to collapse. Well, it. either way, but it's just convenient. So there's know. two different types of boats that come and get you. That's all. There's two, you know. Also, a lot of people love boats, and it's a great uh, experience. That's my to boat. To have. It's my Forrest Gump. Oh, That's gosh. my boat. Why do you always go <laughs> Forrest Gump? Forrest Gump's a good movie. It is not. You're insane. Okay, anyway, we're not let's move talk on. About this no. Here. So okay, so let's let's move on. So so the, these are the, the the I call them the Lux Light Resorts. I like that. Uh, again, less expensive than the deluxe resorts. Uh, not as many, uh, not as close to the parks, except for Winter's Lodge is pretty darn close to Magic Kingdom. Uh, there's two different kinds of transportation from there. There's the bus and the boat to Magic Kingdom. Everything else is bus. Uh, all the value resorts are all buses, except coming in the fall is the Skyliner. Oh, right. That's so exciting. Which will have, from Pop Century, uh, the Skyliner transportation to Epcot Hollywood Studios. So that's going to actually... Totally give you huge advantages. And it's going to up the prices probably for Pop Century and for Caribbean Beach. Sure, but it's going to make it worth it. Because the, the Skyliner will be there, making it That's much awesome. more convenient for you to get to Hollywood Studios and to Epcot. Right. So, okay, so let's move on to the regular deluxe resorts. I'm on. I'm in it. And this is where the, listen, if you want to do it up, you wanna, you're want you going to be in a resort a lot. You're going to spend a lot of time. You're going to take advantage of the amenities. You're going to go to the spas. You're going to, you know, you want to walk to a park. Right. This is where you stay. Right. <clears throat> and I don't want to say if money is no object because it's not, it, it, listen, it's these are the most expensive. Uh, th- you don't have to have it break the bank though, but there are different levels to different rooms in each resort. Absolutely. That you pay for. Like the contemporary has the, you know, the uh, club level, right? In the tower. Right. That room is crazily outrageously Expensive. Then there's the it's amazing. Right. And then there's the <laughs> the tower uh Bay Lake view, which isn't as expensive. Right. As the tower theme park view. Uh then there's the just the tower uh standard tower room. Then there's the outside buildings. You know, the the, the outer buildings of the contemporary right. that aren't as expensive as being in the tower. So you kind of look again, look at what you want from your trip. Absolutely. Same thing at, at you know, um, at the Grand Floridian has the out, outside right, buildings. You can make it depending on your budget. You can make it fit into your budget. You know, right? And stay at one of those the the, the fancier deluxe resorts. Right. I mean, the deluxe resorts really are they're they're for people who are going to spend time in the resort. You're not going to stay at a deluxe and sleep, shower, and swim. That would be absolutely silly. not. No, that would be. Silly. It's a waste. A tremendous waste of money. It is just to be close to a park or right. be on a monorail line, but you're still. I I will. I will argue with my clients. I will <laughs> argue with guests till I'm blue in the face. Don't spend the money and not spend time if you're going to stay at Deluxe. Absolutely. But I will say Stay at a moderator of value. Spend your money more wisely. Exactly. But I'm going to tell you guys something. If you are planning to go to Disney and you are planning to spend time in your room and it is within your budget, stay in a Deluxe. Yeah. It is so worth it. And it's just an amazing experience. I mean, some of our favorites, we love Bay Lake Tower Contemporary. We love that. It's incredible. Uh, we love Boardwalk, oh, yes. love Beach Club. Yeah, right? of course, I love. Love again, we love Wilderness Lodge. You know what's funny is I always say Grand Floridian. I'm like, eh. And Grand Floridian to me is a v- beautiful, very nice resort. Um, this is gonna sound really lousy because I I work I don't work for Disney, but I'm definitely affiliated with Disney. I'd rather stay somewhere else than Grand Floridian. But that's just it's a nice place to go see. But that's but it's personal so preference, people. sure, absolutely. Yeah. Like some people love that, right? Kind of higher end feel, higher end look. I don't feel like I can fairly discuss it because I've never gotten the opportunity to stay there, but I've been there and it's right. really. I I like great to go too. like listen. I give me the Polynesian every day of the week. Oh my gosh! Like if Polynesian I'm spending my if, if I'm spending a good amount of money in, in Walt Disney World, 
I'm saying the Polynesian. Right. If you want to go to Hawaii, but you can't quite afford yeah. Hawaii, but you can afford the Polynesian, it's almost the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's close. We've to both places. It's close. I'm just kidding. But it to is... me, they were in the inside of the hotel room, basically, in Hawaii. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, I, I don't know the difference anyway. But they do an incredible job. I love the Polynesian. I, I, obviously, I can't hide my love for Trader Sam's, for Captain Cook's, for Ohana, for Kona. All this those. Is all Polynesian. All Polynesian. Um. I love Ohana, right? Who doesn't love Ohana? That's the best. If you have little kids and you you want to do a character breakfast, do Ohana, right? It's fantastic. <laughs> Food's great, really, really great. Characters are uh, Mickey Mouse, um, Pluto, Lilo, Lilo and Stitch, Stitch, which are so much fun. Go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say um, this is a huge, huge, huge advantage to staying in the deluxe. Is not only do you have you know the um, re- the table service restaurant, but you have character breakfast at your resort. Yeah, that's really cool. That's huge. And it's a really big deal. It's one that you need to get reservations for at 180 days, pretty much. Because Ohana, oh, it's... The, just even when you have reservations, actually, you know, it's you funny. get there and you wait in line for 20 minutes. You do. To... Actually, you can. Get, I feel like you can get um, reservations a little more, you know, easily if you're willing to eat at a weird time. Yeah, because right? now they serve. They serve um, up until I forget what time it is, but they start they start serving dinner. I think like three o'clock now. Yeah. So if you're starting, if you're willing to eat three at three o'clock, you can probably get reservations. Right now, dinner is not character. Right, dinner is not character. But it is such a unique experience. Dinner is the it's almost like a Brazilian it's steakhouse, steakhouse, but it's not exactly, exactly. Like but very similar. They they cook the food on skewers. They bring it over right. to you. Uh, there's all different kinds Completely of meats unlimited. you can try. Yeah, you want to get the meat sweats. Go to oh, Ohana. Yes. <laughs> That's where you can fill up on different kinds of meat. And yeah. But it's delicious. Very good. Um, so yeah, so I love Polynesian. Uh, I love, again, Bay Lake Tower, the Contemporary. I say Bay Lake Tower because we have uh, DVC. Uh, but the Contemporary with, you know, uh, the Contempo Cafe. I feel like the Contemporary and Animal Kingdom Lodge are almost opposite in that if you want to feel like you're not in Disney as we said go to Animal Kingdom Lodge if you want to feel like you're in Disney yeah. go to the yeah, Contemporary yeah there's nothing like the Contemporary sit at the Contempo Cafe watch the monorail <laughs> I mean then you're you're in the middle of Disney and you, it's unbelievable and I'll I'll again another thing I'll fight with is Chef Mickey's I'll, I'll tell you not to go to Chef Mickey's but you can go but expect <laughs> the food not to be fantastic but you can it, it's, at, it's a controversial thing kind of for me to say it is although it's not that controversial because I think it's pretty well known in the Disney kind of community, and for people who don't know, the food's not great there. It's, it's just not great. great. The the experience, the, the experience, experience, the characters are incredible. It's amazing. You right. actually can't see that many characters in any other meal. I don't right. think. No, you're right. I mean, you get Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Goofy, Pluto, and right? they really take their time with you. Yeah, they really do. The characters are incredible there. The food, it's just it leaves a lot to be desired. I agree. I've given it another try. It was okay again. wasn't great. He was disappointed. Uh, go to Tusker House. Go to Animal Kingdom. Go to Tusker House if yes. you want those characters. Not all of them. But there's, I don't. I don't think you get. Who do you not get at Tusker House? You get Mickey. You don't get Minnie. You Sometimes get you, either Minnie or Daisy. They switch out. Yeah. So it's, it's not as many characters at Tusker House, uh, but the food is, is a lot better. I think. But again, it depends on your party. So if this is your, I would say if this is your first time. Going, yeah, you, you want to do? Yeah, I know. You're gonna want to do it. It's iconic. I know. It's the food's not that good. I'm sure they'll change the menu soon. It's when fine. it's been years. I don't. I just want listen. I <laughs> I don't know if you can make the menu better. Right. Because literally, there's so many people there. There's so, they have to make so much food. That's true. That it's just not as good as a, a food experience as other places. They make it in like huge batches. There's bacon for days. It's just not as good <laughs> as the like bacon in other places. Uh, so that's just my opinion at, at that place, at Chef Mickey's. Um, but yeah, like the the, the, the Lux Resorts, so they're for, let's say, let's kind of, we don't have to recap, but kind of like, so it's for, if, if you want to spend a lot of time in your resort, go to Lux. If you, you know, if you want the spa at like the Grand Floridian or, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, go, you go to Lux. If you want multiple table service locations, go to Lux. If you want to be really close to the parks. All right, so talk monorail line, right? Absolutely. Grand Floridian, Polynesian, and the Contemporary all in the monorail line. So if you want to take one monorail to Magic Kingdom or walk to Magic Kingdom, you say it's the Contemporary. If you want to take the monorail to Magic Kingdom, 
Um, you can say a Polynesian or Grand Floridian. If you want to take two monorails to Epcot, say any of them. Right. Because you take one from uh, your hotel to the uh, transportation ticket center and one from the next one from there to Epcot. If you want to walk to a park, stay, again, I said stay at Bay Lake or you can, say, you can walk to Magic Kingdom or stay at Beast Club, Yacht Club, Boardwalk. You can walk to Epcot and you can walk to Hollywood Studios, which we've done yes, a lot. Yes, many times. <laughs> That is, un- I mean, that's another huge advantage. If you if you have a party that is cool with walking, that's awesome. Yeah, you don't and- have to take anything. You don't have to wait for anything. You don't have to wait for a bus. You don't even have to wait for a monorail. You just go. <laughs> and even if you have park hopper tickets and you want to get to Magic Kingdom and you're staying at one of the Epcot resorts, as long as you have park hoppers, you can walk through Epcot. Yes, you don't take have two to... monorails to Magic Kingdom. I mean, I recommend if you're walking through Epcot, at least grab a drink or something. Yeah, or, or, a do, or, or hit a, hit an attraction, <laughs> hit, hit a quick Nemo, attraction, or see a spaceship character. Earth. Yeah, <laughs> but you, we have we've done, done, that done a it. Lot. A, we've done it a lot. When we stay at like Boardwalk, and we have, we have park hoppers, we'll say instead of taking the bus to Magic Kingdom, let's walk through Epcot. Right. Take an hour, walk through Epcot, make our fast passes for later in the day. And enjoy the heck out of Epcot before we get to Magic Kingdom. Absolutely. It's a win-win. It's also a huge advantage, if you do have kids, for us at least, um, on the way back. So let's say we've done Magic Kingdom and we're ready to go. But our kids are like, I just want to do one more fun thing. That's their one big thing, right? It's like one yeah, more one fun more thing. Yeah, one more thing, yeah. So we're like, okay, well, we're going to go to Epcot. We're going to walk back to you know Boardwalk or Beach Club, wherever we're staying. So while we're going through Epcot, you can pick one more fun yeah, thing. Yeah, whatever has a short line, we yes. can do. It's so great. you know you take the or, two miles. Oh, I didn't get a Mickey Ace Cooper. No problem. They have them in Epcot. Yeah, we're walking through Epcot <laughs> to get back to our right. hotel. And if you're worried about getting your steps in on your Fitbit, you oh, get yeah. a lot more steps. Like we, I never did. Not that we're ever worried about that when we're in Disney because you don't have to be. <laughs> you get average like twenty thousand steps a day. It's, it's true. insane. Uh, hey, listen, that's why you don't put on weight on your Disney trips. Never, never put weight on because you're just walking your your hiney off all the time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so go ahead. I'm sorry, I think something that we didn't talk about that I know you're about to chime in on is the pools at the deluxe resorts are, talk about ratchet it up, talk about Beach Club. So, right, yeah, that's a great point. Beach Club has, and Yacht Club, have Storm Along Bay. And actually, you can only, that's the only pool. It's the only one you can only use if you stay there. And you guess need... why? Go ahead, say why. Go ahead. <laughs> no, do it. <laughs> it ha- it's a sand bottom pool. Really? It's the only, and it has a beach all around right. it. Right. Oh, I love the beach. It is the only sand bottom pool right now on property. There's been rumors that there's going to be another one built. Uh, but right now, it's the only sand bottom pool on property. Uh, so you go. It's literally like a bay. There's a, there's a lazy river around it. There's an awesome water slide. I mean, who doesn't want to go on a lazy river on vacation? Yeah. So it's it's a really <laughs> cool place. And there's also uh, Hurricane Hannah's. Oh, I love Hurricane Hannah's. Listen, if you're an adult, you can get a, a, an adult beverage at Hurricane Hannah's. We recommend Hannah's. them. They're delicious. Get a lobster um, roll. Roll. That's what I was looking for. A lobster <laughs> roll. And you can take your time and sit at the pool. And, you know, after you go to Hurricane Hannah's, put your feet up. And it's an awesome. It's, it is. Beach Club Yacht Club uh, is, is an awesome place for that pool. And, of course, Boardwalk is the one The scary of my... clown pool. The well, Luna Park I wasn't pool. talking about the pool, but, oh, that is a little <laughs> crazy. But I just in general at Boardwalk, I mean, talk about... you. Talk about That's never the ultimate. Having... That's the ultimate for not having to leave your resort. You never have to leave your whole trip, and you will be totally satisfied. You stay a week at Boardwalk, and you never have to leave. You really don't. You don't. You're gonna eat at a different restaurant every night. You sure can. I mean, there's, there's how many restaurants, right? So. There's ESPN. Right. There's Trattoria Al Forno. Mm-hmm. If I oh, yes, correctly. right. And that's a character there's breakfast. There's Flying Fish. There's, uh, there's um, Big River Grill. Big River Grill. Yeah. Uh, and, and I know I didn't name them all. A personal family favorite. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you can just, you can go to a different restaurant there, like, each night of your trip. Or, you know, we spend a lot of time at Big River Grill and ESPN because they both have uh, food that our kids will eat. But, yeah, like, that's a place where the, the pool is awesome. The there's entertainment. There's you know the lo- the lobby there is one of my favorite lobbies. Me just too. Because it's just, it's just I don't know. It, it's a very well done Disney lobby, but it also reminds me kind of of like my my childhood going to the to boardwalks of the Jersey Shore. Like that's what it feels like. Of very course. like right. old school kind of Jersey or or Coney Island kind of boardwalk. Right. Absolutely. Um. So yeah. So if you want to spend a week. At a resort, that boardwalk is amazing. And if you want to spend time going back and forth to the parks, I mean, you within, what, five minutes you can be in Epcot? In the you World can't Sh- be there. In the World Showcase and right. the uh, International Gateway there. It's I love amazing. the International Gateway entrance. I don't know why. 
I do too. Just because it just feels it's special. So, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> like you, you can do. walk there from your resort, and then you're like, oh, I'm sneaking it. Yeah, <laughs> like, you feel like you snuck in Epcot, even <laughs> though really you went fun. through like security and <laughs> the metal detector and. No, but it's a cool way that you get to start right in the middle of. World of Showcase. Epcot, right? It's a great. That's just another advantage. And another thing is, is the uh, Skyliner is coming there as well. Oh right. So that'll be landing. That'll be landing right into the world. That's going to make the the world of uh, the International Gateway entrance a little busier. True. Because the Skyliner is going to let off right there. You can't sneak in anymore. Not, you're not gonna, it's not going <laughs> to feel as much like sneaking, I Fair don't enough. think. But actually, they're going to be, they're not super fast moving cars, and they're all individuals. So it's not like, you know, 200 people are getting off the monorail at once and getting in line. No, you're right. It's a few people at a time. So they should be able to kind of handle right. the, anyway. So it, it, the deluxe resorts, listen, we don't have to really sell them because th- they sell themselves. Like, go to one, and you'll know that. Like, that oh, I see. I yeah, that's why this is this is the best. Right. And the deluxe villas are the same way. Like the places at um, Saratoga, lesser lesser Saratoga than the other ones, because Saratoga, it, it's so spread out. It used to be the Disney Institute. Now it's um, a resort, so it's a little different than. But I think the Saratoga others. gets a bad rap too. I agree because you can walk to Disney Springs, which they just redid Disney Springs, obviously, right. and there's so much there. And the the Saratoga itself does have a lot of good stuff in it. I just I, feel like people don't. No, I I, I agree. It, it is it's, appreciate it. <laughs> you're, are you talking about the cheeseburger flatbread? Oh, basically, <laughs> <laughs> that's a reason to say for me. So, all right, so let's recap the resorts, right? So, if you want to stay close to a park where you can walk. You want to stay on a monorail line. You want to do the luxury resorts. You want to stay on a monorail line. You want to walk to a park. You want to have multiple table service options. You want to be close to the other resorts and parks. Those are all reasons. And you want to be in your room or at the resort. Or pampered. like Or totally pampered. The Disney resorts yes, all totally. have, a great do, way do a great it. job. The cast members are great everywhere. Yeah, they are. You'll get a great cast member at every All-Star. You get a great cast member at your, you know, your villa at the Contemporary. But... You want to get pampered, then the deluxe resorts, you know. Oh, absolutely. Again, with the spas, with the different experiences you can have, with, you know, just all, all things you can add on one of the deluxe, the deluxe resorts, uh, it's worth it. You want to stay in a, in a uh, um, what are they called, over the border at Polynesian? A bungalow? A bungalow at the Polynesian. That's the ultimate, right? Yes. That'll cost you, what is this up to now? It's like $7 know. billion dollars a night. I think that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> to stay in one of those rooms. I remember I had a friend of mine who isn't. A, a cheap guy, and you know who I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Who isn't a guy that who's afraid to spend money on stuff? He asked me the prices for the bungalow, and I was like, "Dude, I don't even want to tell you what the prices are." And he's like, <laughs> "No, what is it?" And I gave him the price, and he was like, "Oh no, never mind." <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "For his but tenth- if you are so fortunate as to be able to do that, yeah, I think it was for his and his wife's tenth anniversary." And then he was like, "All right, never mind. We'll just stay somewhere else." <laughs> but yeah, it's, it, listen, if you want to spend the money and, and really live it up, living on the border, and you know, just feeling like you're in Hawaii or in one of the Polynesian islands, that's a way to go. Absolutely. I think that's an, ama- that's an amazing experience. Again, I'll never stay in one, I don't think, ever. Do you? No, probably not. No, we're never staying in those. But, yeah, like, listen, you want the ultimate in Disney kind of luxury and and pam- pamperedness. And <laughs> <laughs> I looked at me and she's just, eh, she's strong. She's like, go with it. Close enough. <laughs> um, then and staying in the luck. So, all right, so I, I think we did a good job. I think so too. I think we covered everything. I think we ran like I ramble a lot, and I apologize. You did great. I did too. <laughs> but I think if if I hope when someone listens to this, they're like, all right. So I know from what they said that this were this is the level I should go to. This is the resort I should go to. Um, and I hope I can point people to this episode and be like, listen, to, like where should you stay? Listen to this episode. Yes, I hope so too. I, do you think, I think that you think I we did a good job? I right. think you did a great job, and I want to say, you guys, really fast, that this really is our third take of this episode, and I just want to, like, without giving you too big of a head, I do want to say that I really do appreciate, because the first, we started, and he stopped it after, like, five, ten minutes, and he said, I'm just not happy with this, I don't like how it's coming out, let's try again, so we did, <laughs> and then he stopped that after five minutes, and he said, I still don't feel like this is the right fit, so we talked about it, we figured out a different format. Yes, it happened to be the one I suggested. It did. It um, was yes. And and I and he had to stop unfortunately because he had a coughing fit in the middle of this. Um, but I said, right, "Do you like this?" And he said, "This is the perfect way. This is how I wanted it to come out." So I want you guys to know how hard he works on it, and That's nice of you. he really wants to present the best possible podcast. Well, it, it's 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 about one. I want to seem like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and the other part is I I want people to get something out of it. Like I don't right. want someone to. I, 
I would hate, and I, I've never put an episode of, of the podcast out that I, after I put it out, I was like, that stuck. Because I just wouldn't put it out. Right. Like, I listen, I've had guests on, I won't, won't name their names, when that I've had to edit podcasts because I'm, it was hard. Like certain, and those are guests that have done one show. Right. Like you, <laughs> now they're all like sitting in their house, being like, like "Is that talking about me?" No, like <laughs> th- you know, th- there are certain certain times you don't you don't jive or you, it doesn't go well, and you're those either those episodes are edited or they're not usable. Like it's just the way it goes in this sometimes, and that happens. So that those two, the first two takes we we did, they weren't usable. Like I don't like how we sounded. I didn't like it. Just didn't sound right. It didn't right. sound like this podcast, and I I needed to change it. So thank you for saying that. I, I do. I don't know how hard I work, but I. <laughs> I think you work pretty hard. But I do want it to. I do want everyone to get a lot out of each episode. So that was really nice. And this is a really important one, as you said, because so many people have this question, and this really is tailor made for if you're trying to figure it out. This will really help you. I hope so. Yeah, I, I hope so. Um, and you know, you and I are. We always have fun recording these. And... I have always have a blast. Yeah. So anyway, Amy Liz, thank you so much for your help for setting me straight and getting this this episode done the right way. Thanks for having me. And uh, this is a lot of fun. And we, so we have a couple, we're going to, you and I are going to do episodes all the time, but we have, I think one of the episodes that I, we have coming up for the listener to get, to get excited for is Chuck and I are going to do a preview of all the Disney movies that are coming out in 2019. Oh, that's going to be such a great There podcast. are some awesome movies coming out for Disney this year. Toy there Story, are tons. Toy Story 4, Avengers 4. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do, we're gonna we're gonna talk all about that. That's gonna be that's fun. That's gonna be really fun. So anyway, all right, Amy Liz, thank you again for uh, for recording. Again, thank you for for making the episode awesome. Oh, You're the best. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And that is gonna do it for this week's episode of the Ear to There Disney Podcast. Thank you so much once again to my co-host, to my guest, Ames, Amy Liz, my wife. She is always fun to have on the show and always makes me laugh, both on the show and in real life. So thank you again to Ames. I don't know if you'll ever listen to this episode because you never listen to the show. But if you do in like 2025, let me know. (laughs) And thank you so much for listening to the show. I really appreciate it. I really hope this one was helpful and you got something out of it. Like I said at the start of the show, it's really, really difficult to kind of narrow down the resort. So hopefully this episode can really help you out in that way. All right, just remember, there will be a new episode of the Ear to Their Disney podcast each and every week, hopefully on a Monday, as well as a new episode of the Walt Disney World Word of the Week on Thursdays. So until next time, thank you again so, so much for listening. Have an amazing week. Bye-bye. Here to thirst.